can only do so much through traditional therapy. Um, we wanted to do stem cell treatments to give him the extra boost he needs and then through therapy um, develop more abilities. I mean, I don't think stem cells alone are going to cure anything unless you keep going with the therapy and um, you know, further um, train his mind to do new things and whatnot. So, um, you know, we're, we want to do as much as we can for our son while he's still young and, um, you know, doing stem cell treatments for him, I think will give him the extra boost with um, being able to do new things, which after our first visit here, um, we've definitely seen some of that. Mike Ritchie. Uh, my son is uh, Andrew Ritchie. He's currently three, he's just turned three years old. Um, he was born at 25 weeks, uh, pre 15 weeks premature. Um, he's, uh, he has cerebral palsy um, sometime between uh, one week and one month of age. He had a hemorrhage in his brain. Uh, it was initially diagnosed as a grade four. It was then reduced um, to a grade three after an MRI. And the part of his, um, the, I'm not a medical person, but the basal ganglia, um, I, I think is the correct term for the area of his brain that got damaged. But anyway, the, the area of his brain that got damaged was the part that controls um, motor functions. So that was damaged. And uh, ever since he's gotten out of the NICU, um, and gotten home. We've been doing therapy with him since he was diagnosed with cerebral palsy. Um, it it made motor movement in pretty much every area. Um, I mean, he could do some very basic rolling. It's extremely hard for him to, to roll on his own, uh, pretty rare. Um, he could make very few sounds, uh, one, maybe two. He could do ba quite easily. Um, da was kind of a stretch <laughs> for him. That's me. <laughs> no real, he, he couldn't really manipulate his fingers that well. Um, being able to grab things with his hands was pretty tough, especially in the, in the right hand. Um, uh, you know, he had high tone, um, arching. Um, yeah, he's, it, it, he didn't really, he, we obviously had to assist him with, with everything we do. Um, he, he also, um, it was very hard to feed him. All, the, all of his foods had to be um, some, thickened or made into like a baby food consistency. Um, he couldn't drink juices or water straight. He would choke and throw up. Um, he would always throw up at some point during the day, pretty much an entire meal or the entire previous two meals. Um, he had delayed gastric emptying as well, so um, feeding him was pretty tough. A drink? Mm. Some grilled cheese? Yes. Big bite, Jero. Mm. By the time you left, he was eating nachos and cheese and drinking water pretty good, and um, we didn't have to thicken anything. And um, he's eating just regular human food, and he was not throwing up. Um, I mean, just coming here, just for him to not throw up alone was definitely worth it. Um, you know, he's diagnosed, like I was saying before, he's diagnosed with delayed gastric emptying. And so having him not throw up two or three times a day or in the middle of the night is just, it was just huge for us. And we, we were able to get him off a whole bunch of medications because of that. A lot of the stuff that related to was related to improvements in his with his delayed gastric emptying. That was you know before we even left the facility, and we were here for five weeks. So you know within within a month, we saw 
the internal improvements. Um, the majority of the, the motor stuff we saw between a month and uh, a month to six months out, um, he was able to make more sounds. B A L L O O He was able to have um, better fine motor control, like he was a actually able to start pointing at things and you could actually reach out and steady his arm. You point to the crocodiles. One, two, where's the other one? Where's the other crocodile? Point to him. Three, good, good job. job. His head control was better. He was able to roll over um, unassisted uh, quite a bit easier. Um, he was able to roll over assisted e even better. Um, you know, before we came here, he was um, starting to crawl. And, you know, as, actually looking back now on our second treatment, um, he's able to crawl a lot easier um, with minimal assistance too. So. It's really kind of hard to do internet research on um, facilities that do stem cell treatments, but um, being able to see other patient experiences and the Stem Cells China website and being in touch with uh, contact from, from the company, it was very helpful and the, the, the thoroughness of the medical application for, for, for the pre-screening for patients was um, you know, after going through all those processes and, and reading, reading up about other patient experiences, um, it kind of gave me a comfort level that it's you know a legitimate place. They're they're doing good things there, and, and people are seeing improvements. So, yeah, everything from our first treatment for our son was, I mean, it's pretty amazing what what came about of it. You know, not many people know much about stem cells and what they can do and a lot of the things that you see about stem cells it's you know okay now this kid's walking and stuff and it's like well you know no they're not exactly going to do that they're going to help in ways you're never going to imagine